how do we manage to use the superpower to be tuned in to people's emotions, but also not let it completely hijack our own emotional experience of really everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh man. Um, you know, I, it, it was a superpower. It was a survival power. Um, because even I, I think I write in there and it was it to, for sure is the most personal I've ever mm -hmm. been with kind of growing up and how things were hard. Um, and even when things were great, I mean, y'all know my sister Barrett and then I've got, she's got a twin Ashley and then I've got a, we've got a brother between us and so I'm the oldest. And so even when things, and it's, it's a hard place to be because even when things were really fun and intensely fun, I was the protector in waiting. Mm -hmm. And I knew one, something is going to go sideways. One comment's not going to work. One joke is not going to be funny and something's going to happen. And so at the same time, I'm kind of being made fun of for not jumping in all the fun. Mm. I'm also going to be the person when shit turns really fast, that's going to have to gather my siblings and get them out of the way, wow. you know? And yeah. And so, so as I've worked through that, especially with ther a ther my therapist, um, she's like, you know, you called it a superpower because you could read very quickly, wow, this is going to go bad in five to seven minutes. You know, um, she said, I would call it hypervigilance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she said, and boy, does that exact a price? You know, you uh are... Yeah, you're always hyper vigilant, um, even if things are good. Because the unpredictability growing up is the really hard part. It's like, I, you know, that's the hard part about not being able to guess what the antecedent is. Like, what is the thing that's going to cause everything to, to, yeah. to tumble? And so I think the work that I still do is there's two things. So I think honestly, and this has been hard, and I think I was in the space writing the book, which made it really hard. I could cry maybe, but I think I've had to limit my time with people that demand that hypervigilance, including <sighs> people, including people I love. Mm -hmm. huh? Same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first started seeing Diana, my therapist, um, I was, golly, I was 10 years sober and I'm 25 now. So 15 years ago. Um, and I, I was sober, but I was really leaning into food and work. Mm -hmm. And so I had just kind of given up some of the food stuff and I was really working on work. And I remember her, I remember saying to her, I need some medicine. Like I need some medicine. Cause I got nothing now. I got nothing. Mm -hmm. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, I, I'm like a turtle in a briar patch and you took away my, my Bud Light and you took away my cigarettes. And now you've taken away the apple fritter and now you've taken away the 70 hours of work. Like I'm a turtle, I'm a turtle without a shell and a mm -hmm. briar patch everywhere. I turn, it hurts. I'm mm -hmm. going to need something. And she goes, have you thought about getting out of the fucking briar patch? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. 